Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming out. I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so talking to you about how Anthropic can help you incorporate AI into the products that your startups are building. So first off, big picture, what's happening with AI? Well, I, I think it's going to be the next major technological revolution. And in order to properly frame that, let's think about what happened in the last two major technological revolutions. So first off, the Industrial Revolution was a radical drop in the cost of physical goods and transportation. It's kind of hard to appreciate today just how difficult it was to even travel 100 miles or, or you know, purchase something and, and get it to your house. Oh, wow, this is a very aggressive clicker. I'm, I'm going to hold it at arm's length here. Um, Next up, the digital revolution, which has happened over the last 40 years, has been a radical drop in the cost of data, communication, and computation. So the word calculator, that originally referred to a person who, who wrote numbers on, the, on a sheet of paper. And now we have computers doing billions or trillions of calculations in a second. So the AI revolution is a radical drop in the cost of cognition. We're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so talking about what that means. First, a little background on myself. Um, I'm a startup founder like you all. Um, I spent most of the 2010s building and exiting a company called Matterport that does... Whoa, okay. This is... I'm going to be very careful here. Um, that does um, 3D reconstruction of buildings. So. Essentially, we, Matterport has a specialized camera that you can bring through any space like this one and very quickly produce a photorealistic, um, uh, geometrically accurate 3D model. Now, when we started Matterport in 2011, uh, AI meant hand-tuned computer vision features and specialized hardware. Um, however, by 2018, the deep re learning revolution was in full swing and we were able to use the millions of spaces that our customers had scanned in order to build a 3D from 2D deep learning model that enabled you to build a, a 3D model from any image. Um, after exiting Matterport, I, I saw the, the um, versatility of the then new transformer models, including in computer vision, a field I didn't expect transformers to be so effective in. And I switched to focusing on LLMs, that's large language models, in 2022. And I joined the Anthropic team back when they were still a, um, an AI safety research lab and helped them with their transition to being a product-focused company. So a little bit of background about Anthropic. Um, it was founded by several of the core authors of the GPT-3 paper. Um, essentially, they, whoa, uh, one of the TVs just went out. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep talking and hopefully it'll come back. All right, um, we're, we're doing this on hard mode. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Um, so, yeah, this, the group of founders in Anthropic wanted to have a safety first approach to building powerful large language models. Basically, they felt that there shouldn't be a compromise between power and model safety. And so Anthropic has also taken a focus on providing large language models via API to help enterprises incorporate AI into their products. So although we have Claude.ai, which is a um, consumer-oriented AI chatbot, our core business is in providing these powerful, yet steerable and interpretable large language models for enterprises such as yourself. Um, so you may be familiar with, with Claude.ai. Um, however, the majority of our business comes through the, the API you see on the right, where you're able to um, make an API request and very quickly get intelligence back at the other end. About a month ago, we released the Claude 3 family of models. And this is the most powerful family of large language models out in the market right now. Um, we realized that no one model was right for all audiences. 
And consequently, um, we decided to release a, a family of three different models um, that are spread across two orders of magnitude with regard to cost and speed. Um, so at the fast and expensive end is the Haiku model, which can read a 300-page book and answer questions about it in just a few seconds, and can be used for latency-sensitive applications, such as real-time web content. At the other end, we have the Opus model, which is our most intelligent model. And so for any tasks requiring a maximal amount of reasoning or code generation or other high-end tasks, Opus is the right model. So there's a wide range of different use cases that we've seen customers um, utilize with Claude, and I'm going to focus on a few in particular. But first, I'm going to talk about the differences I've noticed between large language model intelligence and human intelligence. This is great for framing where large language models are likely to have the largest impact on existing or new workflows. So first off, large language models tend to have a deep background in all fields of knowledge. Um, it is pretty incredible. You get them started on any topic, and they're able to draw from a massive font of wisdom. Separately, on any information that they don't have um, in their pre-training data, they can ingest, utilize, and reason on hundreds of pages of information that you provide to it. Finally, these models are very, very good at taking on simple knowledge work tasks and doing them incredibly quickly and incredibly cheaply. On the other hand, where humans tend to still have the edge is in things like common sense, um, complex planning, basically building a plan and executing it over a period of days. Um, humans also remain better at self-correction and learning from their mistakes. And on tasks that are on a long time horizon, this ability becomes important. And finally, human experts in a particular area are still going to produce higher quality finished co content than a large language model will. And I very much like the fact that LLM intelligence is shaped differently from human intelligence because that will lead to tremendous value from human AI collaboration. All right, I'm going to talk about a few different applications of large language models that we have seen our customers adopt. Uh, so first off, the ability to talk to books or to FAQs or knowledge bases or applications. Essentially, because the model can take in and understand large volumes of information, you can basically turn any knowledge base into a chatbot. So, for example, if your company provides customer support, you can essentially send Claude the FAQ or the product manual, um, and um, Claude is then able to instantly act as an expert in that product. Uh, separately, if you need to go beyond 300 pages, you're able to use a variety of retrieval plus sub-agent architectures um, that enable you to get the model's intelligence over that larger knowledge base. Um, separately, we've seen a lot of our customers use Claude to democratize access to experts. Um, so it's interesting. A human expert is still better than an AI expert, but an AI expert is better than no expert. So, for example, there are about 200,000 therapists in the U.S. Um, even if they took on, say, 40 clients each, which is a huge workload, they could serve 8 million Americans total. But there are about 400 million Americans, so the rest, the rest of America simply can't get therapy. There, there aren't enough therapists. And so this is the sort of thing where um, AI can fill that gap you know, it can provide standalone service, but it can also scale and extend human experts. Um, AI systems also have advantage over experts in a range of fields with regard to things like being infinitely patient, always being in a good mood, being available at two in the morning if, if you have an urgent question, and also being able to answer stupid questions with grace. Basically, no, no question is below them. 
Separately, we've seen a lot of our customers use Claude to scale and automate their back office work. Um, shortly after we launched the first version of Claude, we were inundated with 3,000 inbound sales requests. And I actually ended up writing a prompt to go through all of those sales requests and essentially triage them based on a set of criteria. Um, Claude is also able to take in image input, so you can send in scanned documents, PDFs, things like that, and Claude is able to process them with ease. So there's a wide range of knowledge work tasks of this flavor that, that um, Claude is able to um, automate and, and lead to substantial cost savings. One final application theme to note is that essentially Claude is going to make every employee a mini CEO with a team of specialized AI agents working for them. And so if you think about any piece of software that has a pretty significant learning curve, like say a, a CRM or something like Photoshop or writing complex spreadsheet formulas, essentially large language models give you a natural language interface to those tools. So even if you barely know how to use Photoshop, you can, you can essentially ask for what you want, and the model with expertise and access to the API is able to complete the task for you. Um, what this means for you is that incumbent software providers are going to need to adapt to AI quickly, or they will get replaced by AI-driven startups such as yourself. And so you can look at what's happening with established players in the market and see if there's an opportunity for disruption. So I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about Anthropic's AI safety focus and why we believe that safety is good for business and that safety should be at the core of how you choose a large language model. Uh, so first off, there's a range of different safety concerns to, to think about. You may have heard about hallucinations. Models often tend to make information up, which, is, which, which can have significant consequences depending on the, the field of, of uh, study it's operating in. Separately, you've probably heard about jailbreaks. Jailbreaks are people using um, the conversational interface to trick the model into doing something that um, its creators didn't intend. Separately, you may have heard about issues with unreliability, where essentially you give the model a set of instructions and it follows some but not all of those instructions. Finally, models are currently opaque. It's, it's often not clear why a model does um, what it does. And you know, if the model is behaving strangely, not having an ability to um, diagnose that issue is, um, is a significant challenge. So I'm going to talk about how Anthropic has solved all of these issues. Uh, so first, a couple of examples. Um, here's someone jailbreaking a model into um, trashing the product that it's supposed to be giving um, customer support for. You know, this is obviously a serious brand risk and the sort of thing that, that companies should take very seriously. Uh, here's another example. A, a bunch of companies um, integrated uh, chat GPT chatbots into their, uh, their pre-sales support, and someone managed to um, convince a car dealership's chatbot to give them a car for a dollar. Now, the, the legal status of chatbot offers is not determined yet in the US, but there was a lawsuit in Canada where essentially a chatbot promised someone a bereavement fare on an, on an airline, and it turns out the chatbot hallucinated the existence of this fare, and the court ruled that the chatbot was speaking on behalf of the company, and that made the chatbot's offer a legally binding offer. So for this reason, it makes sense to, to take safety particularly seriously. You want the model to behave in the way that you intend it to behave. Um, separately, large language models are being used for higher and higher stakes applications. And as a result, it's very important that we get this right. So I'm going to very quickly cover Anthropic's approach to AI safety. There, there are three major pillars to it, reliability, steerability, and interpretability. First, we have a core technique called constitutional AI 
that allows you to explicitly write a constitution of core principles that govern the model's behavior. Um, we're then able to uh, create a large volume of synthetic training data that can then be used to fine tune the model with these principles in mind. The, the raw text of the constitution is public. You can look it up. Everything on there is, is very uncontroversial and it's drawn from sources like the UN Declaration of Human Rights. And as a result, Anthropic has been a leader in jailbreak resistance. Um, Claude is far harder to jailbreak than, than other models out on the market. Um, separately, Anthropic has uh, leading industry, um, oh, sorry, industry leading accuracy and reliability on um, reasoning and long document question answering tasks. So the Feebles eval is an eval in which different models are asked to summarize a book into a short set of claims. And Claude did far better than other models out on the market at producing high quality truthful claims with very few claims that were not supported by the core text. Um, separately, we've done a lot of fine tuning of Claude to maximize its steerability. So here's an example where I, I give Claude a, a list of instructions. It has to find a, a set of cities that satisfy a, a, a set of constraints. And Claude is able to follow these instructions perfectly. So finally, to conclude, uh, I wanted to share we have had a particularly solid research focus on fine-tuning Claude to be reliable across a wide range of tasks that are important to enterprises. Uh, so this includes long document Q&A, reasoning, and the generation of code and um, uh, specialized languages like SQL in order to produce high quality, reliable content. We are very excited to see what you end up building with Claude and we're here to help you. Um, I've put up some URLs. Uh, Consult.anthropic.com lets you get access to the Claude API so you can get started building today. Um, we also have extensive documentation that can answer any questions that come up for you. And finally, you can use Claude directly in your work with our um, enterprise chatbot at Claude.ai. Thank you so much. <laughs>